today, I'm giving the very first presentation of turning quality on its head. One of the things that really um, made me kind of sit up and think, I made a huge mistake a year and a half ago by joining Google, was that Google it was a complete and utter 180 for me in terms of testing and what I knew about testing and what I loved about testing. If you read chapter two of my latest book, Exploratory Software Testing, they're a little salesy. Do you see, do you get that? <laughs> uh, chapter two, I, I go into detail about why manual testing is the right thing to do. And I'm not going to go into that detail now because I want you to buy the book. Uh, and then I join a company like Google, which thinks manual testing is something that you only do if you screw up in the early phases of the process. And so here I am at this company that completely opposite of, of what I believe. And, um, and it's not like it's a dumb company. You know, they've done a few things right. Maybe they've got a point here. So I've been studying this issue of early cycle testing versus late cycle testing and the conventional wisdom I'm going to turn on its head um, in, this, in this presentation. So I want to start with How do we do this? Where do we do testing? Do we do it early in the process? Do we do it late in the process? Is there a mix of the two that is right? So what if we wanted to do better? And Google software isn't perfect. No software is. I know mean, there's something in my introdu introduction about I've overseen the development of high quality software. I've actually never done that. Um, I've never seen a piece of high quality software in my life. And, and I'm, I'm hoping I see one before I die. It's really doubtful. So, so if we're going to spend more on testing, if we think quality is something that we really need to do, if it's really important for the world, where are we going to spend it? Are we going to spend it on more of the upfront developer-oriented testing? Or are we going to spend it in the back, maybe even all the way back at crowdsourcing, and invest more there? Which is the better place? If we have extra money to to invest in this, where should we spend it? And so that's this graphic, right? And at, at Google, I really should have a lot more of these guys. These are developers. These are the testers. Where are we going to give our budget? And so I'm going to keep score. Right now, it's nil-nil. So, so let's start off this, this little match here. Okay, so we all know quality can't be tested in. We've heard this over and over and over again. You can't build a product and then paint quality on top of it. It just doesn't work. So, What do we do about that? Is there, what can you say about that as a software tester? As a software tester, you really aren't necessary at all. If you build the product right from the beginning, it will always be right. And so you've got to give this one nil to the devs. Now, secondly, what about the cost of a bug? If you think about how much it costs to find a bug, if you're writing code and You find a bug while you're writing code. The cost is basically zero to fix it. What if you find a bug in unit tests? The cost is really minutes there. You get to integration test, and now integration test, it's a little bit more. Because now you're generally talking about the work of two or three developers. You find a bug, and now you're probably talking maybe tens of minutes and tens of dollars to fix it, maybe hundreds of dollars to fix it. You get to system testing, and now it's a little bit more expensive. You brought more people on. You've got these creatures called testers, and those testers draw a salary. And in Google, it's the same salary as devs draw. So this is a problem. So, so now we're talking thousands and maybe even tens of thousands of dollars for bugs. So let's take it a little bit further. Now let's get it into dog food. So in dog food, it gets really expensive. So we, we're, right now, we're dogfooding Chrome operating system at Google. So that means I've got to buy a, a laptop that has the operating system on it for all the, the Googlers. And I have to be able to manage this. I have to take one program manager and say, it's your job to manage the dog food process. One program manager, right? And program managers, we pay them the same, too. So this is an expensive person who's doing nothing but managing the dog food process. And now I've got to tell a tester, too, you're going to triage all of these. You're, you, we, we are showing on Chrome operating system that we were getting the same bug reported hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of time, times. This is nuts, man. This whole dog fooding process is insane. 
I am spending a lot of time just going through of smart people's time who, again, aren't writing code. They're not finding new bugs. They're not contributing to the quality of the product. They're just doing make work around having to do the dog food process. Why are we doing all this stuff? All this crowdsourcing and beta testing. It's expensive and it doesn't add value. Two nil. Now, the third thing that just makes me want to fire every tester I've ever met in my life is that they don't create anything of lasting value. What did you do last quarter? Oh, I filed 200 bugs and I wrote a test plan. Oh, you wrote a test plan. I went in, I was so pissed off one day, to hell with these notes. I was so pissed off one day, I went in and I said, all right, I wanted, every, everybody raise your hand if you wrote a test plan. And of course, every tester's hand goes up. All right, now, right now, show me a test plan that is currently in 100% usable form. Nothing out of date in the test plan. It talks about the current project product in its current state, right? Hands are going down. And at the end of all this, we said all the test plans are dead, right? It's like that little kid in the movie. I see dead people. Well, I see dead test plans. Everywhere I go, the test plans are out of date. They're all out of date. You write it, you say, okay, this is what I want to do. And then you start writing test cases against it and then the product changes. Or the test cases break. How many people go back and keep that test plan up to date? None at Google. I don't know how many people you have. But even if you do go back and keep that test plan up to date, you're paying somebody to do that. It's not value add. You're creating a document nobody needs. You're creating a document we don't ship. It's a waste of time. Fire the people who are doing it, and those people are software testers. 3 nil. All right, so now, go back into the dressing room. Let's give an inspiring halftime speech. Now, come on, you testers. Stop doing stuff Dev doesn't care about. Stop doing stuff that doesn't contribute to the product. Do something useful. We're paying you lots of money. If you want to continue to be paid lots of money, do something people care about. What could we help devs do? Devs, basically, if you think of software as a forest, devs grow trees. That's what they do. In their little vertical, they grow their tree, they take care of their tree, they maintain their tree. In this whole forest of functionality, devs have a tree. So what should we do? Should we hire a bunch of testers? to help them water their tree? Because if you tell me that you want to move testing earlier in the life cycle, if you tell me that finding bugs earlier is the right way, then aren't you implying that that's what I should do? That I should hire dev-like testers to help water that tree and help make sure that every, as every line of code is written, it's the best possible line of code. That's what you're telling me. Move it forward to the code. And the code is the artifact that we care about. OK, so let's score one for tests, because we all know that this is wrong. The real bugs, the real interesting bugs, aren't the ones that live within that tree. The real interesting bugs are the ones where you've got two trees that interconnect. This is where the really interesting bugs go. And those bugs, devs can't find. Devs think like devs. That's why we call them devs. Now, oftentimes, those trees look really good in isolation. And until you start thinking about, like a user, the trees look great, right? A dev might think, yeah, look at my tree. It's beautiful. It's got great leaves. It's upside down, right? It's right in the major path. Who's going to see these sorts of things? Not the devs. They're there. Look, they're still there watering their tree. Oh, it's fine. It's great. It's upside down. Devs can't think like users, and we need them to think like users. So. I've got to score another one for, for test here, because there is a use for people doing this sort of, sort of work. If you're going to move testing forward, there's a lot of test cases you can't write. Picture Steve Jobs holding up the iPhone 4. It's a good thing he had it in his right hand, because if he puts it in his left hand, it doesn't work. <laughs> right? Now, simulate that for me. Can you simulate that bug? Can you design a test lab and an automated test case that's going to find that bug? No, you need the complete product. That's why I have a picture of the entire forest here. The entire product has to be complete before a certain class of bugs will emerge. And I would argue that those are the most important class of bugs. Those are the ones that are the most user-facing. 
They are the ones that are part of the user's main scenarios of use. So it's 3-3. Three, three. And I can't make a decision here. If I'm, you know, the, the Google gods, our gods are named Larry and Sergey, and I'm going to decide, here's, you know, a billion dollars, make the quality of our products better, all I've got is a tied score. It's 3-3, three, three, Larry, you decide. What are we going to do? So here, here's a couple of problems. And, and the reason that I'm siding with late cycle testing is because I really think we've hit an asymptote in early cycle testing. At Google, for example, our unit test coverage is basically 100% on almost 100% of our products. There's only a limited amount of value that additional testing up front will cover. 